that uh, Vidyanidhi Prabhu speaks so much about is on Milton and he's so happy and inspired by the programs that you all are doing. So I hope Krishna willing that someday we can all meet each other and uh, and I can take your association also. So thank we'll you for coming. Thank you. So today's topic is actually the glories of devotional service. Uh, in one sense, it is such a wide ranging topic uh, that, you know, I was thinking where to start and where to end. Um, but maybe we can share with you some nice points that come from, from Bhagavatam and from the scriptures about the glories of devotional service. Devotional service actually is considered to be an important, um, it's, it's, it's the most essential thing for all of us. But sometimes we should not forget that devotional service simply means love of God. That is the main, main point of devotional service we should understand. This whole world is actually revolving around a need for us to actually uh, express some love. And you will find that everywhere in the world, the living entities are connected by love. Uh, we are never connected by hatred, envy, jealousy. All these, all these characteristics of lower modes, they tend to disperse us rather than bring us together. So this is a very important point. Sometimes when people talk about why a devotional service should be the goal of life, if you speak to the materialist even who does not understand devotional service, but if you try to explain to him or her that love is what changes everything in this world, uh, even then they can actually identify with that point. The only difference here, Prabhu and Matajis, is that devotional service is always meant for Krishna. This is the starting point we should remember. Devotional service is never meant for anyone else. Uh, we can never say that devotional service or bhakti is meant for a person. It will only always exclusively be meant for Krishna. And why is it meant for Krishna? This is a very important point. Because in Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very nicely states this point. He says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Sadhyu Sadhya Kabunoya, Shranavadi Sudde Chitta, Karoe Duya. This is a very important point for us to understand because it is very clearly stated in the pages of Sastras that actually all of us, all living entities, we all have dormant love for Krishna. In other words, we don't have to separately cultivate devotional service. This is the first point we must understand about the glorious nature of devotional service. Devotional service does not have to be transplanted from something outside to enter into our hearts. It is already in our hearts, but it is only dormant. So Mahaprabhu makes it very clear to us that dormant love for Krishna is present in everyone, every living entity. So when we understand actually that every living entity has dormant love for Krishna, our worldview and the way we see the living entities also change. And this is a very important point because it brings in us compassion. It brings in us the understanding that no one is condemned in this world, that everybody has an opportunity to revive this wonderful dormant love for Krishna. So that's the first point we must understand about the glorious nature of devotional service. In many other cases, you know, a quality may or may not be present in us due to so many uh, reasons. But in devotional service, we must understand this love for Krishna is not something alien. It is already in the heart. But Mahaprabhu tells us this dormant love has to be awakened and it can be awakened in a very practical way. It can be awakened simply by associating with devotees. That is a very important point. The word simply is very nice. When we use the word simply, it means we have to be simple. Simply just doesn't mean that, you know, oh, it is easy. It is an easy process, but the process becomes easy when we don't complicate matters. That is why in devotional service, it is always used, the word simply is used. Simply means that we should be simple in our approach. When we want sadhu sangha, that sadhu sangha should be with one goal, that we want to serve devotees. When we come to the center, for example, whether it's Milton or Singapore, our mood should always be that we are coming there for two things. One is to glorify the Lord, and second is to always serve the devotees. If we have these two goals in mind, then devotional service is very easily awakened in our heart. So this is the first point to be understood, 
the devotional service is not only um, is not only very natural for the devotee, but actually it is already within us. There is no extraneous endeavor. But to awaken this, the first thing we do is to associate with devotees. And then the next thing we do is Shranavadi. We hear, we hear about the good instructions of Krishna. And when we hear these good instructions of Krishna, we cement it by chanting Hare Krishna Mama. So actually three things are the foundations of devotional service. Take Sadhu Sangha. You please hear about Krishna. And after hearing Krishna's names, you chant his names. And in that way, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita and Mahaprabhu, they tell us so nicely that this is the way to actually awaken devotional service in our hearts. So this is the first foundational point of the glory of devotional service. Then the next point that we must try to understand is how do we define devotional service? What is understood by devotional service? For this, Rupa Goswami has given us this very nice point in the Nectar of Devotion. The Nectar of Devotion, he says very nicely, Sarva Upadi Vinir Muktam, Tat Paratvena Nirmalam, Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhakti Uchate. So he makes it very clear. This devotional service is known as Bhakti. Bhakti means always that whatever senses we have, we should engage the senses. The senses are five, but the most powerful sense is that compelling sense of the mind. So actually, Rupa Goswami is telling us that we have to somehow or another engage our senses in the service of the Lord. This is very important. If we come to the temple to engage our senses in our service, then it is not devotional service. If we come to the devo if we come to Iskon, if we come to the center and we expect that people must satisfy our senses, then we will become disturbed. You know? Eventually, we will think we are doing devotional service, but somewhere along the line, we will become disturbed. So this is a very important point for us. And not only is it important for us to understand this point, but we should also understand that when we engage our, when we engage our senses in the service of the Lord, then the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of all senses, he is the person who is known as Rishikesha. Rishikesha means one who controls the senses. So if we use our senses in the service of Krishna, Krishna will direct our senses in the proper way. He's like the director. But if we don't use our senses in the service of Krishna, then it becomes very difficult. So when spiritual, when the spirit soul already has bhakti in the heart, expresses this bhakti in the form of service, then two things will happen. Nectar of devotion says they are known as side effects. You know? Normally when we take medicine, we have some side effect. But this side effect of bhakti is very nice. It's not a bad side effect. Two things will happen. And this is the glory of devotional service. When we perform devotional service by using our senses for Krishna, now you are seeing, you are seeing uh, me, but hopefully you are seeing Krishna somewhere. You're hearing about Krishna. I, and you know, this is a virtual feast program. If you all came together, definitely there will be prasadam also. So all your senses are being engaged. But when they're being engaged in this way, two things happen. Automatically, without separate endeavor, we are freed from material designations. This is such an important point. We are freed from material designations. And simply by being employed in the service of Krishna, our senses become purified. Please remember these two points, Prabhu said Mataji. When we take up devotional service, the material designations are not important to us. We don't do service because we are president. We don't do service because uh, we are given a post. In fact, when you look at all the great devotees in Bhagavatam, they were not given any particular position to do any service. They were not concerned with material designations. They came from all walks of life. Gajendra was an elephant, Sudama was a Brahmana, Parikshit Maharaj was an aristocratic king. But they put aside all material designations and they just performed devotional service. So this is a very important point. And this is how we define devotional service. And Prahlad Maharaj, you know, says so nicely in devotional service in Bhagavatam. I think it is seventh canto, fifth chapter, in the 23rd and 24th verses. He says so nicely that devotional service is so practical. All we have to do is hear about Krishna. 
we chant about Krishna, we remember Krishna. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam. Then after that, what do we do? We serve the lotus feet of Krishna. This is how we perform uh, service. Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. So actually, the glory of devotional service is that it is eminently practical. It is very, very practical. Who cannot respectfully worship Krishna? All of you have deities at home. You offer prayers through Bhagavatam. We accept Krishna as our best friend. And whatever time that we have, we just surrender it to Krishna. So actually, by through the pages of Bhagavatam, we can come to understand how simple and how sublime devotional service is. So this is the context in which we must understand the glorious nature of devotional service. Actually, uh, when you have time, you should look at the purport of the verse in the first canto, second chapter, 12 verse. First canto, second chapter, 12 verse. Tat shraddhadana munayo nyana vairagya yuktaya pashyanti atmani charmanam bhaktya shruta grahitaya There Shukadev Goswami so nicely says that if we are seriously inquisitive about Krishna, and this is the ingredient about devotional service. If we want to come to devotional service, the first quality we should develop in our hearts is that we must, we must be serious about it and we must be inquisitive about it. The moment we are serious and inquisitive about Krishna, Krishna himself will provide the knowledge by which we can come to him. This is a very nice point. We don't have to worry about how to gather knowledge. No matter how much Srimad Bhagavatam we read, no matter how many, uh, how much knowledge we gather, it is finally Krishna who reveals that knowledge to us. 10.10 10 of Bhagavad Gita tells us, Tesham Satata Yuktanam Bajatam Priti Purvakam. You see, the qualification to amass knowledge is actually Priti Purvakam. How much devotional service we have in our heart. If we have devotional service in our heart, Bajatam Priti Purvakam, Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam, According to the amount of devotion we have in our heart, to that extent, Krishna will reveal whatever knowledge that we need. So that's why the glory of devotional service is, it's like one package. The moment we start performing some devotional service to Krishna, He gives us the requisite knowledge. He gives us the seriousness to come to Him. He gives us the revelation to understand how to perform this devotional service. But we should just be practical and we should just understand and accept that Krishna is in our hearts. That's why it's very important. So I was saying that in this verse of 1 to 12, if you look at the purport, somewhere in between the purport, Prabhupada gives an amazing definition of devotional service in just one line. And it's a line that if you have time, you should just put up somewhere in your house, you know, and always remember it. The genius of Prabhupada when you study Bhagavatam is in his purports. Just by reading, just by meditating on Prabhupada's purport, very quickly we can come to understand how wonderful actually this devotional service is. So in 1 2 12, uh, there is a nice line that Prabhupada states devotional service, which is based on the foreground of full knowledge. So when we perform devotional service, it is always on the platform of full knowledge. And this knowledge is gained by studying Srila Prabhupada's books. That is why Prabhupada gave his blood and his sweat and his life to giving us these books. Because these books are the doorway to devotional service. So Prabhupada says, devotional service is based on the foreground of full knowledge. And this knowledge is combined with detachment from material association. So it's very important, Prabhu and Mataji, is that when we take up devotional service, we must be very careful to actually associate with devotees. When we associate with devotees and we put Krishna in the center of that association, then material association goes away. If two devotees come together and we talk about history and geography, that is not devotional service. If two devotees come together and we talk about a third devotee, that is criticism and fault finding. That is gossip. But when two devotees come together and we talk about Krishna, and we talk about how to do service for Krishna. That means automatically material association is gone. And then Prabhupada says, 
this devotional service, which is fixed by the oral reception, oral is not O-R-A-L, oral is A-U-R-A-L. In other words, by hearing, which is fixed on the oral reception of Vedanta Shruti. Vedanta Shruti means Srimad Bhagavatam, is the only perfect method by which the seriously inquisitive student can realize the absolute truth. This is the royal road to devotion service. And this is the glorious nature of devotion service. Sometimes devotees say, um, I understand that devotion service actually means that we have to be pure devotees. The goal of devotional service is actually to become pure. But devotional service is a spectrum. You know? It is a spectrum, which means that actually devotional service is such that when we want to perform devotional service, in the beginning, we are actually, we are actually going to be very difficult to understand how to perform devotional service. Sometimes we think you know, that devotional service is such that immediately we can become pure devotees. But it is not possible. It's not possible. Because in the beginning, there will always be some anarthas. There will be some anarthas. And when we have some anarthas in our heart, in the beginning, devotional service is actually performed with a lot of impurities. But we should not be discouraged. That is why Prabhupada says that there are, there's a wide spectrum of devotional service. Huh? This is very important. There's a wide spectrum of devotional service. In the beginning, we are considered to be what we call Kanishta Adhikaris. Prabhupada writes in 1, 2, 12 of the same purport. He says that we are, when the beginning, we are very concerned, you know, about how to perform devotional service in such a way that we are only attracted perhaps to the deity of Krishna, but we don't know how to treat the devotees. Then later on, as we perform devotional service, devotional service has this ability to purify us. And when it purifies us, we move from the Kanishta Adhikari platform to the Madhyama Adhikari platform. This is the beauty of devotional service. When devotional service is performed nicely, it has the ability to purify us. Sarva Upadi Vinir Muktam. When we engage all our senses in Krishna, our senses are purified. So we, we don't have to worry about whether we will become pure devotees. If we take up the process, Prabhupada guarantees that that will actually come. But from the very beginning, we should understand the goal. The goal is actually Savai Pumsam Paro Dharmo, Yator Bhakti Radok Sajay, Ahai Tuki Aprati Hata, Yatatma Suprasidhati. This is a verse from the first canto, second chapter. I think it is the sixth verse. It is very clearly stated there that the goal, we have so many dharmas. All of us are working. Some of us stay at home to take care of the family. That's also work, you know. And so many of us are engaged in so much of occupation. So there are so many dharmas that we do. But let us be clear that there is one paro dharma. And that paro dharma is known as savai pumsam paro dharma. What is that? Yathor bhaktir adok saje. In other words, it is our duty to perform and render devotional service to Krishna. But Prabhu and Mataji, this devotional service needs to be performed in two ways. Ahai tuki akriti hata. In other words, we should not have any motive in our hearts when we come to perform service for Krishna. This is very important. If we have any motive in our heart which is material, Krishna, I'm coming to perform devotional service. Yes, I'm doing the garlands for you. Yes, I'm planning the programs for you. But in our heart, you know, there is some desire, some expectation that when I perform all these services, people must praise me. People must give me some accolades. People must pat my back and say, oh, Prabhu, such a nice Bhagavatam class you're giving. This is all motivation. And when we have motivation in our heart, that means we are still associating with matter. In other words, we are coming to Krishna with motive. This is very important. Bhagavatam insists that when we come to perform devotional service, our only motive is to glorify Krishna. Our only motive is to actually uh, serve the devotees and also please the devotees. That is the meaning of Ahai Tuki. When we perform Ahai Tuki, then the effect of... Not interrupted by anything. Sometimes people ask this question 
devotional service is so nice but today i chant tomorrow i lose uh, the momentum next day i do nice chanting the next day i don't have the momentum to chant today i'm reading but tomorrow i don't read why am i so inconsistent the reason why we're inconsistent is because our motive is not correct if we inspect our own motive in our hearts and that one no one can do except you only our spiritual masters the acharyas know our heart if we pray very hard to our spiritual masters in Srila Prabhupada and the deities then they will allow us to inspect our hearts so if we really want to actually become very peaceful and blissful in devotional service if we really want to understand how glorious devotional service is we should all help each other to perform devotional ser service without motive ahai tuki apratihata then krishna will give us uninterrupted flow of devotional service now when we perform devotional service in that manner then something wonderful happens yayatma suprasidati suprasidati means self satisfied yayatma means the soul in other words bhagavatam tells us the secret to become self satisfied in this material world is actually to perform unmotivated and uninterrupted devotional service this is the true glory of devotional service actually everyone in this material world is only looking for one thing what is that one thing is happiness it is happiness you ask any neighbor of yours at this moment who does not even believe in krishna and you ask him what is the goal of your life at some point he will tell you i want to be happy that is my goal that's the most important thing that's the reason why we want to do anything someone may say i want a good job someone may say i want a good husband good wife but if you ask them why you want that the ultimate goal is happiness but what they don't realize is that the happiness in this material world without bhakti or devotion service is fleeting it's temporary how long can your riches satisfy you how long can the family satisfy you and often we become the sources of miseries ourselves to others forget about others giving us miseries we are also sources of miseries to others so actually without devotional service one cannot become peaceful it is said in shastras only two kinds of people don't want to become suprasidati one is a madman because only a madman doesn't want to be happy and the second one is a dead man because dead man cannot be happy but between the dead man and the madman everybody wants suprasidati so it is achievable but it must be performed in this manner without motive in the heart and it must be performed without interruption this is very important now the next point we have to understand about the glory of devotional service is that it is very practical when we say it is very practical what we mean is that the moment you take up the process the process itself has a way of cleansing us that is why the glory of something is when it is down to earth and if you read 7th chapter first verse of bhagavad gita in that verse in the purport prabhupad has given us the whole formula to perform devotion service it's an amazing purport prabhu sen mataji and we should read it you know in there prabhupad quotes shrimad bhagavatam and he quotes very nice verses from bhagavatam shrunavatam swakatha krishna punya shravana kirtana riddhyanta stohi abhadrani vidu notu vidu noti shruhat satam nasta prayesh abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhakti bhavati naishtiki tada rajastamo bhavah kama lobhadayasche cheta etai anaviddham sthitam satve prasidati एवं प्रसन्न मनसो भगवद्भक्ति भगवत्तत्वविज्ञानमुक्तसंगस्यजायतेविद्यतेहृदयग्रन्थेस्चिद्यन्तेसर्वसंशयाः Seventeen to twenty-first verses, and they are all very beautiful verses to study to understand the glories of devotional service. 
And Prabhupada gives us in these verses how practical devotional service is. He says that all we have to do to suffer, attain success in devotional service is to hear about Krishna. So we start by hearing him. And that's what we are doing now. We hear about Krishna. And how do we hear about Krishna? Directly from Bhagavad Gita or from Srimad Bhagavatam. The moment you perform this activity, it is righteous. And the moment one hears about Krishna, Krishna who is in the heart, is dwelling in everyone's heart. He is the best well-wishing friend. He will start purifying the devotee from within. So the more constantly we hear about Krishna, the more we become purified. And when we hear about Krishna that way, whatever dormant transcendental love that we have for Krishna, it starts to wake up. And when this dormant love is woken up, what happens to us? We hear more about Krishna. And the more we hear about Krishna, we become more fixed in devotional service. And when we become more fixed in devotional service, the modes of passion and ignorance, they leave us. Material lust, avarice and greed, they become diminished. And when these impurities are wiped away, we become steady in the position of sattva gun, pure goodness. Then we move from sattva gun to vishuddha sattva, which is known as pure goodness. And when we become fixed in pure goodness, what is the symptom? We become very enlivened in bhakti. I'm seeing some of your faces and your faces are glowing, you know. You have tejas on you. Why? Because you are enlivened by devotional service. And because you are enlivened by devotional service, Krishna gives us the ability to understand the signs of God. And by just performing this bhakti yoga, the hard knot of material affection to this world is actually broken. It is actually torn. And this is how we come to understand the Supreme Personality of God. See how wonderful is the glorious process of devotional service. That's why Prabhupada said, devotional service is a science. Doesn't it sound like a science? Just by starting to hear Krishna, so many points we can look at and we can test it. Am I really now having taste for Krishna? Am I happy in devotional service? And we can also diagnose why we are not happy. If there is some defect somewhere, immediately we can come to understand what is the problem and what is happening to us. That's why the glory of devotional service is that it is eminently practical. It can be done by a child, Prabhupada said. It can be done by a very old person. Anyone can come to devotional service. So this is the first glory of devotional service. The second glory of devotional service is that devotional service can never end. It is eternal. Why? Because it's non-different from Krishna. If Krishna, Krishna and Bhakti to Krishna is non-different because he's absolute. The moment we chant Krishna's names, Krishna is with us. The moment we read Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is with us. So that is why it is nicely stated in Bhagavatam that while the powerful effect of time affects everyone, time destroys everything in this material world, but time cannot destroy bhakti. I think the verse is 3rd Canto, 25th uh, chapter, 38 verse, 325, 38. Na karhinchin shanta rupe nang shanti no me nimisho ledi hedihi yesha maham Priya Adma Sutascha Sakha Guru Suhridam Daiva Mishtam. The meaning of this verse is so nice. Uh, Kapila Dev, you know, who is none other than Krishna, he is now instructing his mother Devahuti. He says, My dear mother, let me tell you something about devotional service. Devotees who receive this devotional service, it is like a wealth, you know. It is known in Bhagavatam as a transcendental opulence. We invest in so many things, isn't it? In the banks, in all these investment funds. But after COVID-19, everything is wiped out. All our investments bear no fruit. People are having sleepless nights because they don't know whether they have enough money to continue. This investment of bhakti never goes out. And the interest is always very high. Because this bhakti is considered to be transcendental opulence. So Kapila Dev tells Devahuti, whenever anyone performs bhakti, then 
they are never touched by time. Bhakti is never affected by time. Bhakti can never be destroyed by time. Na kari hinchin mat paraha shanta rupe. Nang shanti no me nimisham. Nimisham means time. Ledi heti hi. No weapon in this world can ever stop the advancement of bhakti. Nothing can stop bhakti in your hearts. Bhakti is our monopoly. It is our monopoly. Each one of us has the right to bhakti. And Krishna has guaranteed bhakti such a way that time will never take it from us. Why? This is very important. Because the devotees accept me, meaning Krishna, as their friend, as their relative, as their son, as their preceptor, as their benefactor, and as their Ishta Devata, their supreme deity. Because all these relationships are accepted by the devotees. And it is accepted with Priya. Priya Atma Sutascha. Priya means with, with devotion. The quali qualification of devotional service is we do it with our heart. Prabhupada always defined devotional service in the 10th canto as heart to heart transaction. Very nice point. You know? At the beginning, when Krishna was being born, was, was adventing into this world, how did he come into this world? He came into the mind and consciousness of Vasudev. Vasudev transferred it to his heart and then transferred Krishna from his heart into the heart of Devaki. And then into the heart of Devaki, Krishna came and then he moved into his womb, into her womb. And her womb, you know, was so powerful and so golden that all the Devatas came and they chanted Purusha Shukta. So Prabhupada said, how was Krishna transmitted? He was not transmitted from semen to the ovum. No, he was transmitted from heart to heart. That is the glory of devotional service. Prabhupada said, all you have to remember of devotional service is that it is a heart to heart transaction. That is why Prabhu said, Mataji, when we deal with each other in devotional service, we must always make sure that we deal with each other from the heart. If anything comes from the heart, it is always real. Nobody in this world, even if you don't believe in Krishna, when someone says, I'm telling you that I feel all this from my heart, you know he's sincere. Nobody says, I'm feeling it from my kidney, or my, I'm feeling it from my liver. Nobody says that. Always they say it is the heart. Because even the materialist knows that only in the heart is Krishna. And that is why when devotees accept Krishna as their friend, as their preceptor in any of these rasas, then Krishna makes sure that your devotional service will never be affected by time. Krishna Das Kaviraj Maharaj wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita when he was very old. Very old. His senses should be failing him. But when you read Chaitanya Charitamrita, how wonderfully he has captured Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Old age did not affect him. Vishmadev was so old when he ended his time on the Mahabharat field. But his senses were always perfect because Bhakti did not touch him. Srila Prabhupada was traveling the world when he was 70. Many of us may reach 70 and think, how can I move from one room to the other? But he was traveling the world. So Bhakti is not affected by age. Bhakti is not affected by time. You know, there's a nice verse by Brahmaji in the second canto, sixth chapter, 34th verse. In today's world, we are so concerned about Alzheimer's. We are so concerned about dementia. But millions of years ago, Bhagavatam has given the formula to avoid Alzheimer's and to avoid dementia. And who gives the formula? Brahmaji gives the formula. Narada came to Brahma and asked him, My dear father, I am seeing you engaged in material creation. And whenever I see you engaged in material creation, you are so old actually. Brahma is very old, you know. But how is it that you are so sharp? How is it that you are so active? How is it possible? And Brahmaji says so nicely, Na Bharati me angam risho palakshate navai kvachin me manaso mrisho gatihi na me rishikani patanti asatpate yan me hritao kantavyata drito harihi If you forget anything in this verse, don't forget the last two, drito and Harihi, Drita Hari, the secret never to become senile, never to lose our senses, 
is actually in holding on tightly with great zeal to the lotus feet of Hari. Dhrita means to hold tightly. Hari means Krishna. So we should be Dhrita Haris. The opposite of Dhrita Hari is Dhrita Rashtra. Dhrita Rashtra means to hold on tightly to properties and material assets. That's why Dhrita Rashtra, you know, was sitting down in a throne even after his, his Kaurava sons were decimated. And he was still thinking falsely that I am the king. He was wasting his time. His liver was defective, Bhagavatam says. His teeth was going. He was already blind to speak. He, could, he was hard of hearing because he was not holding on tightly to the lotus feet of Hari. He was not. Just one or two years ago, you know, it came out in um, Dandavats actually. One devotee, one elderly lady devotee, she started getting Alzheimer's. And she was so afraid because for years she was doing pujari work at one of the temples in the US. And she was so afraid that by getting Alzheimer's, she'll forget Krishna. But the amazing thing is that when she got the Alzheimer's, um, the only thing that she kept doing was chanting. And when the devotees kept asking her, you know, she would chant and chant and chant and chant. And then when she finished chanting, you know, she would be, she would finish it and then she'll pick it up again. So one devotee asked her this question. You've already finished your rounds for today, you know, so you can take a bit of rest. She said, no, I've not finished my rounds. I've not finished my rounds. Krishna gave her the benediction that the only thing she should forget that is that she had actually finished her rounds. Think about it. By making her forget she has finished her rounds, Krishna was ensuring that she would eternally chant her rounds. And that's how she left the body, by still thinking, I've not completed my rounds. So actually, Brahmaji's point is so nice. By holding on tightly to the lotus feet of the Lord, Brahma tells Narada, three things happen. Whatever I say, never is untrue. This is the greatness of devotional service. If you read Bhagavatam, anything a great devotee says, Krishna fulfills. And that is how the great devotees protect us. If the great devotees pray for us, we are protected. When our spiritual masters bless us, by their blessing only we can perform devotional service. So that is one quality of devotional service. The next thing Brahmaji says is that because I'm holding on to uh, the lotus feet of Hari very tightly, then whatever is in my mind, the progress of my mind is never deterred. In other words, mind is very sharp actually. You can see your spiritual masters, you can hear about Srila Prabhupada. Even at that age, you know, they are so sharp. They are sharper than us, actually. They remember our names. They remember everything about us. Prabhupada remembered everything because he was Dhrita Hari. And the last point he says, my senses never degrade into the temporary attachment of this material world. That's why Prabhupada writes in the purport, the last line of the purport to 2634. It's an amazing point. A grain of devotion is more valuable than tons of faithlessness. A grain of devotion is more valuable than tons of faithlessness. This is the glory of devotional service. We never, it is never ended by time. It is never ended by old age. In fact, it is nicely stated by Shukadev Goswami, Ayur Harati Vaipum Sam, Udyan Astam Chayan Nasau, Prashyarte Yat Shano Nita, Uttama Shloka Vartaya. In this world, by the rising and setting of the sun, everybody's life is actually shortened, isn't it? Except for one who utilizes his time by discussing the topics of Krishna. So never worry, Prabhus and Matajis, about the passing of time. Time will never affect our consciousness of Krishna. Krishna will always keep our mind intact. All we have to do is perform that devotional service. That's all we have to do. And that's why our Acharyas, no matter how old they were, they were always very, very fixed in Krishna consciousness. The third glory of devotional service is that it is not dependent on any material qualification. This is so nice, you know. In this world, you have to take so many exams, isn't it, to qualify yourself. And then after qualifying yourself, also your boss will send you for upgrading course. You have to upgrade yourself, otherwise you become redundant. The good news is, there's no redundancy in devotional service. Nobody becomes retrenched in devotional service. 
at the at this moment in this pandemic everybody is fearing that i will become irrelevant but when you take up devotional service for krishna every single devotee is relevant every single devotee look at hanuman ji hanuman ji says so nicely in bhagavatam hanuman ji came from a race of vanaras in simple terms you know he was in the form of a monkey but he says so nicely i think the verse is in bhagavatam 518 no 5197 na janmanunam mahato na saubhagam na vang na buddhi na krite stesha hetu ho tairyad vrishishtan apino vanaukasha chakar sakye batalakshmana graja he is praying so nicely to lord ram you know he is saying my dear lord i actually have no proper high parentage at all i'm just a monkey i'm not brahmana you know i'm not even a human being so i'm coming from very low parentage i don't have any education didn't go to school no msc no bcom no ma nothing i'm not from iit i have no qualification then third thing he says you know that i don't even have a house in which i can call you and invite you to give you some prasadam why because i live in a forest and i live from tree to tree every night you know i just move from tree to tree so i don't have any personal beauty i am a monkey i don't look very nice i'm not eloquent i can't chant beautiful prayers in fact i only speak gib- gibberish actually so i have no intelligence i don't come from nice parentage no aristocracy but despite all my disqualifications chakara sakye bat lakshman agrajah you have so kindly accepted my friendship on the basis of bhakti on the basis of bhakti this is the beauty of devotion service anuman ji is saying krishna is so kind even as lord ram that it doesn't matter you know whether we are performing something that looks very big as a bhakti or we are performing something that looks very small when the bridge between lanka and mainland was being built Hanuman ji and the great vanaras were throwing huge rocks in a squirrel came and he was very happily picking up small pebbles and throwing in and hanuman ji said move away brother you know i can just carry big things you just stand one side but hanuman ji said that and lord ram came out and he said the service of the squirrel is on the same platform as the service that you are doing it's not the size of the rock that matters it's the size of the heart that matters and the squirrel is 100% dedicated just like you o hanuman ji see so there's no qualification in this material world that we need actually all we need to do is just perform devotional service sincerely that is why it is nicely stated by pralad maharaj in 7919 of shrimad bhagavatam manye dhana bi jana roopa srutau manne no manye dhana bi jana roopa tapas srutau ja teja prabhava bala paurusha buddhi yoga ha naradanaya ibavanti parasya pumsam bhaktya tutosh bhagavan gajayut paya ha pralad maharaj confirms the same point that hanuman ji confirms he says so nicely in bhagavatam one may possess wealth he may come from aristocratic family he may be beautiful he may be very austere he may have education he may have so much tejas he may he have influence he may have bala strength he may be diligent he may be so intelligent but all these things cannot satisfy krishna none of these things satisfy krishna the only thing that satisfies krishna is actually devotional service and he quotes the example of gajendra gajendra was a simple elephant and despite the fact that he was so caught up with material life when he was caught by the network of the crocodile and he was held on for 1000 years he understood that without without any any intelligence of a human being he could understand immediately that something is wrong here this is the beauty of devotional service devotional service is so powerful that when we are put into difficult situation it enlightens us krishna gives us the enlightenment through devotional service and so gajendra then decided let me take shelter of one who is the shelter of all shelters param parayanam 
And so he chanted prayers to Krishna. And even though he was an elephant, in his past life, he was the great king Indrajumna. And if you remember, the great king Indrajumna Maharaj was a great devotee of Krishna. And he, he, he remembered so many shlokas. But then he somehow died and he was cursed to become Gajendra. But even though he was just an animal, by the grace of Krishna, he remembered all the shlokas of his previous life. This is the greatness of devotional service. As Bhagavad Gita says, there is no loss in devotional service. Swa Alpam, even a little bit of devotional service is enough to protect us from the most difficult and dangerous situation. And there is no more dangerous situation than the danger, danger that Gajendra was facing. This we should understand. That's why Prahlad Maharaj is remembering Gajendra. And he's saying that no material qualification is needed. All we need is sincere devotional service. So we don't need to go for seminars for devotional service. We just have to start practicing it. That's all. Just like a child, you know, when, when a child needs to go to his mother, no matter how many people are in the room, have you noticed how the child will make a beeline towards his mother? Uh, you, you don't need a seminar to teach the child how to go to mother. Child will find the mother. Same thing with a calf. You can put hundreds of cows in front of a calf, but the calf will just zoom into its mother. How does it know that? This is the beauty of Krishna. So devotional service is like that. The moment we perform it, it is natural. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. We will definitely be guided by Krishna. We don't need any material qualification. One time, you know, Narada Muni came to Dwarka and he came to Satya Bhama's uh, palace. On that day, Satya Bhama was giving out uh, donations. And so she, she saw Narada Muni and she asked him, you know, Narada Ji, I'm very, very happy you have come today. What can I, how can I serve you? And Narada said, I only want one thing from you. That which you consider most valuable is what I want. So Satyabhama said, yeah, I have this jewelry that's really valuable. And, she, and he said, Mata, I'm asking about something deeper. What is the thing you consider most valuable? And then Satyabhama got very scared. The thing I consider most valuable is Krishna. You cannot ask Krishna from me. This is not possible. I want Krishna. But Narada said, today is your charitable day. You have promised to give whatever you have to give. Now give me Krishna. Then she said, no, no, let me do one thing. I have so much wealth. I'll bring Krishna, put him on a scale, and then I will put all my wealth. The moment it balances off, you take all the wealth because it is equivalent to Krishna. Satyabhama was very intelligent. You know? So Narada said, all right, you do that. So Satyabhama went to Krishna and said, Krishna, come here. She brought this big scale and she said, now sit down. Krishna was very kind, you know. He played the perfect part of a perfect henpeck husband especially with Satyabhama. This is the beauty of Krishna. When he wanted to be a king, he was the perfect king. When he wanted to be the husband, he was perfect husband. So very dutifully, Krishna sat down in the scale. And now Satyabhama took everything out and put it on the other side. Krishna did not even budge an inch, not even an inch. She was becoming desperate because that means now Krishna has to do with Narada. So then suddenly at that point of time, Rukmini Mata came. Satyabhama said, my dear sister, can you help me now? She explained the situation and she said, you better help me because it's in your interest also. Because now if, if Krishna cannot be tipped, we will both lose Krishna. And now Rukmini Mata saw all the, the valuable gold, you know, and she said, take them all off. She went into the garden courtyard of Dwarka and she saw this beautiful Tusi Marani growing. She prayed to Tusi Marani and she took one Tusi leaf. And she put it on the scale at the other end. And immediately the tulsi leaf went down on the scale and Krishna went all the way up. And Satya, uh, Rukmi Mata took the tulsi leaf. She gave it to Narada Ji and she said, Narada, please take this and be satisfied. And Narada said, today I'm very, very satisfied. This is the glory of devotional service. Krishna is not interested in all the wealth that we have. The only wealth he's interested is in a simple offering from a pure devotee. Krishna loves water, fruit, flowers, but he loves them all because of the devotion that he did. How easy is devotional service? Anywhere in the world now, we are not becoming deprived. 
We are using WebEx, Zoom. We are sitting in our houses. But the glory of devotional service that is, is that it is available to us. It is actually available to us. So this is the greatness of it. There is nothing between us and Krishna. All that's required is Tulsi Marani, the symbol of sincere devotional service. And so to wind down our time with, with you now, we should understand that the glory of devotional service is not only that there's no material impediments, it's not only that a little bit of devotional service brings us very far, not only that devotional service cannot be ended by time or any force of nature, but devotional service also involves a connection to Krishna. As long as we try to be connected to Krishna, that is all that is needed. And if you look at all the devotees in Bhagavatam, Prabhus and Matajis, you'll find that the glory of devotional service is actually in their lives. We could spend hours and hours talking about each and every character of Bhagavatam, but time is of the essence. We can think of a few now, you know. One of the great devotees, or one of the great glories of devotional service was actually shown by Vritrasur. Vritrasur, if you remember, was such a great demon, but he was also a great devotee of the Lord, isn't it? He was actually a pure devotee of the Lord. But Indra was very worried that Vritasur was born to kill him. So Indra also decided that he had to fight a Vritasur. This is one of the great examples of Bhagavatam where two devotees are actually fighting. Sometimes you think devotees should not fight. But in Bhagavatam, you find sometimes devotees seem to be fighting. They fight not because they actually fight. But they actually show us what happens when, <clears throat> when we have issues with each other. But the beauty of the fight between Vritasur and Indra was that Indra was interested in fighting this battle to gain Swargaloka. Vritasur was not interested in the outcome of the battle. Vritasur was only interested in performing his duty. His duty was that he was born to challenge Indra. And so even though Vritasur knew that Indra would win this battle because Indra had been blessed by Krishna, did he become angry with Krishna? No. He was not angry with Krishna. When we take up devotional service, we accept what Krishna gives us. This is a very important principle of devotional service. When we expect something, we are always disappointed. When we accept something as coming from Krishna, we are always peaceful. Parikshit Maharaj was cursed to die in seven days. Did he fight with Shringi Brahmana? No. Nasyat Tad Prati Kurvanti. He did not counteract the curse of Shringi Brahmana. Instead, what did he do? He saw the hand of Krishna. In Bhagavatam, he says nicely, Krishna, you are so kind that you have come in the form of a Brahmana's curse to take me away from this material kingdom. This is the glory of devotional service. That whenever there is danger in our life, there is difficulty in our life, the devotee does not see it as danger. He sees the hand of Krishna. He finds it as an opportunity to remember Krishna. Because it is only in danger that we tend to remember Krishna more, isn't it? When everything is fine, Krishna, thank you very much. When the moment something is dangerous, suddenly Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We are chanting with so much intensity. So there is also Krishna's mercy. In other words, devotional service changes the way we view the world. It gives us an attitude which is always positive. Vritasur was not feeling sad that Indra would win the war. He said that Krishna is so kind that he has given me a chance to fight this war. But you want Swargaloka. I want Krishna. So you can kill me if you want, Indra. But I will give it my best on the battlefield. But when you kill me, I pray that at the point of my death, that my consciousness should be fixed on Krishna. And at that point of time, I pray that I go to his lotus feet. And that is why when Indra killed Vritasur, Vritasur went back to Krishna. But because Indra was interested in Swarga Loka, in other words, material motive, Indra had to suffer for 1,000 years. Imagine you fight Vritasur just to get into Swarga Loka, but 1,000 years you are chased by sin personified and you can't enter Swarga Loka for another 1,000 years. What is the benefit of material motives? Vritasur died, but he won the war. 
He lost the battle, but he won the war. This is the greatness of devotional service. We never lose when we come to devotional service. That's why it is stated, in material world, you may become bankrupt. But in spiritual world, we are never bankrupt. No devotee will, no devotee will face spiritual bankruptcy when they take up devotional service. Never. Indra is the example. It appeared as if uh, Parikshit Maharaj was going to be cursed. But the curse became a boon. He sat down for seven days and heard Bhagavatam. And even though Takshaka, the serpent bird, came to kill him, by the time Takshaka bit him, Parikshit Maharaj had already departed from this body. He had actually cheated death because of Bhakti Yoga. So amazing, actually. The other nice point about Bhakti Yoga is that no matter how much of danger comes, because the devotee is fixed at the lotus feet of Krishna, he is protected. When Ambrish Maharaj was cursed by Durvasa Muni, and Durvasa Muni became angry with him, and he found through his austerities a terrible being to come and kill Ambrish Maharaj, what did Ambrish Maharaj do? Did he give up on Krishna? No. He just continued remembering Krishna. But because he remembered Krishna with so much of devotion, Krishna automatically protected him by sending Sudarshan Chakra. And if only, if only Durvasa Muni had treated Ambarish Maharaj nicely, he didn't have to go one year traveling everywhere with Sudarshan Chakra chasing him. That's the beauty of devotional service. When we perform devotional service, Krishna takes care of all the dangers. The dangers of material life become like water in the hoof print of a calf. Very easily we can cross over it. That is the guarantee of devotional service. And one last point of devotional service that's really important is actually a very practical point that you can find and test right now before we end the class. In the fourth canto, 30th chapter, 35th verse, the prachetas, you know, they say a very nice point. The prachetas were all brothers and they all sat down to perform austerities to remember Krishna. In other words, they performed devotional service. When Krishna appeared before them, he told them that I've ap appeared before you because I'm very pleased by you. Do you know why he said he was pleased by them? Because you're all united in your devotional service. This is very important secret to devotional service. I'm so happy to see, you know, that in Iskon Milton, you're all so united in your devotional service. Vidyanidhi Prabhu was telling me how you have been regularly having such nice programs and you've grown this congregation like anything. The reason why you're able to do that is because you're united. And anywhere where there is unity, even in diversity, Krishna becomes very pleased. And he bestows devotional service into each of our hearts. Then the Prachetas say very nice point. Yatra, idye, yatra idyante katham ristas, Krishnayaha prasammo yataha, Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu, Nodvega Yatra Kaschana. And you can test this right now. They say this very, point, very nice point. Wherever pure topics of the Lord are discussed, in other words, whenever we are connected to Krishna, and how do, are we connected to Krishna? By hearing about Him. That's the starting point of devotional service. Whenever we hear about Krishna, whenever we discuss about Krishna, whenever we do something for Krishna, Three things happen. Three things will three things will not touch us in this devotional, in this material world. Three things. And automatically three things will happen. Trishnayaha prasammo yataha. Trishnayaha means material hankerings. Whatever hankerings that we have in our heart, you know, desire to do this, desire to do that, there's no end to hankerings in this world. But the moment we come to devotional service, the hankering stops. For this last one and a half hours of your nice chanting, hearing Bhagavatam, whatever material hankerings are outside the door, they are not touching us. Nobody is even thinking that I'm hankering for something. The only hankering you may have if this was a real feast is that when is he going to stop and when we can have prasadam. But that's okay. <laughs> it's prasadam anyway. So that is the first thing. No hankering. The second thing that happens when we take up devotional service is that Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu. So Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu means whatever envy that we have in our hearts, because envy is so strong, that envy is not present in devotional service. 
if we came together because this was a social outing, if this was a wedding, for example, in weddings, you know, we become very disturbed actually, not because someone is getting married, but because we are all envious of each other. We look at each other, oh, this one is wearing nice, or oh, he's wearing he's wearing something. Someone comes to you and say, oh, I got promoted. Someone drives a new car and you think, oh, my car is very old. Someone neglects you, someone praises you. And every time we come back home, you know, either we are disturbed or we are enthused. But envy is always there. But when we all come together and we put Krishna in the center, nobody cares who is wearing what. Nobody cares who is there, who is not there. Envy is completely absent in the execution of devotion service. And the last and most important thing that happens when we perform devotion service is not vega yatra kaschana. Udvega. Vega means fear, anxiety. Na udvega means no anxiety. When you take up devotional service, the glory of devotional service is there is no fear in our hearts. Is anyone fear, fearing anything at this moment? No. Because we are speaking Bhagavatam and we are hearing Bhagavatam, there is no fear in our hearts. There is no anxiety in our hearts also. We are just very peaceful. So sometimes people say, so I am chanting Krishna's names. And at that moment, I'm feeling very free of anxiety, envy, as well as, um, as, well as um, hankering. But the moment I stop, all these things come back. So how do I stop that? The process is very simple. Come, go back again to perform devotional service. And again, the problems come, again, go back to devotional service. It is so powerful that the stock builds up. That's why when Ajamil, in the very early years of his life, he was a devotee. But just for a span of time in his life, you know, somehow, you know, he was distracted. And he became so caught up with material life. But because that stock of devotional service was there, it was not destroyed by time. It was not destroyed by any weapons. And somehow the super soul instigated him that he should name his son Narayana. And that he should call his son Narayana, even though he was not remembering Narayana. But Krishna is so kind, he said, never mind. I discount the fact that you were not calling me. It's all right. We will get very upset. Oh, you, you use my name, but you don't actually mean me. But that's why Krishna is Krishna. That's why we are not Krishna. He's so compassionate. And he accepted it. This is the greatness of Bhagavata. And this is the glory of devotion service. So never feel discouraged, always feel encouraged, be happy, satisfied, and blissful in your devotional service. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhu Parada ki, Srila Gurudev ki, Ananda Kori Vaishravinda ki, Yatra ki. Thank you so much, Prabhu. It was such a blissful class, and I'm not just saying that. But yes, in between, I was so overwhelmed. I had tears in my eyes. It was an amazing, amazing class. And we were really wishing that this time would not end. It would continue on. Thank you so much, Mataji. And I wish you all, all the best, you know, in your devotional service. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Uh, I think we, a lot of people would have questions. So if we have time, Prabhu. Uh, some questions we can take? Yeah, maybe a few minutes. Yeah, sure. Prabhu. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we would request you to raise your hands. Just go on mute. And then Ashwaka Krishna uh, Prabhu will uh, you know, take up the questions. Can you just raise your hands? So, Pitambar Das, you can go ahead. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for sparing your valuable time. It was an Nectarian lecture on the devotional service. Prabhu, uh, we are so grateful to you. Uh, Prabhu, I have got a question on devotional service. You know, the very last point which you said, uh, many times I find that devotional service, you know, I tend to slack down, you know, it's like a wave of person. I try to, uh, I tend to slack down willingly or unwillingly. Uh, so my question is, Prabhu, how do we maintain the consistency in our devotional service? That's a really nice question, Prabhu. 
and you are in good company you know because uh, all of us are, all of us are being challenged actually from what i understand in bhagavatam and from hearing propads uh, lectures and all the great devotees in our movement one thing we should note is that when we perform devotional service uh, it is our desire to keep it as consistent as possible but at the same time prabhu because we are also struggling with the modes of material nature there will be times when our devotee our devotional service is challenged there are times when we go out there are times when we go down it is actually very natural why because if you have time to you should read the chapter 31st verse uh, of bhagavad gita in 31st verse of bhagavad gita propad writes in the last uh, line of the purport he says in the beginning of krishna consciousness and when we are trying to execute devotional service there will be many times when we want to follow the instructions of krishna but somehow or another you know because of the influence of the material modes the challenges of our previous anarthas it is difficult but propa writes a very important point he says that as long as one is not resentful of the process and as long as one continues to perform bhakti without uh, resentment and without feeling any feelings of hopelessness and defeat one will surely come to the platform of pure devotional service in other words the ingredient for us is never feel resentful of the process never feel hopeless about the process and never feel defeated it is a myth to think that you know we can keep something completely stable because naturally devotional service is dynamic sometimes we will be challenged sometimes it will be easier but at all times we should always remember that the devotional service we may perform but how it actually comes out is by the mercy of krishna, mercy of krishna. krishna and sadhu this is very important point that is why every time we are not performing devotional service in the way that we want and as you correctly pointed out we become anxious and sometimes it goes up and down it is an opportunity for us to remember that we don't have control over our devotional service even if we try our endeavor is one portion the mercy of krishna is the other essential portion so whenever prabhu we feel that our service is going up and down then the most practical thing we can do is to earnestly pray at the lotus feet of our spiritual masters and shila prabhupad and pray to krishna that krishna i am fully aware that no matter how i perform my devotional service without your mercy the devotional service cannot become consistent the moment we express that mood of dependence and humility to krishna he will somehow sustain our devotional service otherwise what will happen is we can sometimes become subtly proud that see i can maintain my devotional service i can wake up every day for mangalarti i can do the service this way that way so by by making us unstable krishna actually always keeps us stable because we have to turn to him and we have to turn to the acharyas we always have to pray to be dependent on krishna arjuna was like that too in the beginning before he started fighting he was actually very confused and he was advancing so many arguments but when he surrendered to krishna and say krishna now i give up all my efforts you know are not bearing any fruit you take over when he started hearing krishna that's when everything stabilized so devotional service is a continuous process and some days will be better some days will not be better but you are still in the boat of devotional service i like to end this point by by saying something that propad said in one of his lectures prabhu uh, some devotees were asking about you know um, we should be pure devotees uh, we should you know we should move up to become good devotees but propad gave a very nice point he said on a ship everyone is in the ship when the ship comes and docks in the harbor even if you are in the toilet or you are up on the deck you're both deemed to have arrived isn't it true doesn't matter whether you're up on the deck or whether you're at the bottom of the ship you're still in the ship 
And the important thing is you have arrived. Maybe the person on the deck will get off first, but your turn is also coming because your qualification is you're on the ship. All we have to do, Prabhu, is to be on that ship and do not become discouraged by the ups and downs. Ship will have, you know, up and down journeys like that, but the ship is going across the ocean, isn't it? That is the beauty of the ship of devotional service. I hope that's useful, Prabhuji. Thank you. Uh, Vitya Nidhi Prabhu, do you also have a question? Uh, Radhik has a question. Okay. Yes, please, Prabhu, please, Prabhu, go ahead. Look at that. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. I'm Radhika here, Prabhu. Uh, but you said that uh, there should be no motive before the devotional service. But uh, as we all are in material world, we have sometimes some challenges in the life and we go and pray to Krishna. So uh, that time our devotional service is not good devotional service because at that time we are like having some motive for that devotional service. We are asking something from Krishna. That's a nice point. In 2.3.10 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami says, A kama sarva kama It's a very important verse actually. Shukadev Goswami declares that in any situation, whether one has no desires, one has desires, or one has desire for liberation, all of us should unequivocally render devotional service to Krishna. This is a very important point. He says that because very often in the beginning of our devotional service or sometimes even in the middle and while we are performing devotional service, so many dangers come, so much of anxiety is there. Some devotees, you know, feel that oh, because we have to be pure devotees, we cannot put our worries before Krishna. So we'll go to the devatas for the material motives and come to Krishna to be pure devotees. Instead of doing that, what Sugadev Goswami is saying, Krishna is whole and soul for us. In any situation, he is our father. There is nothing beyond Krishna and there is nothing outside of Krishna. Krishna is, is the thread, you know, on which all the pearls are strung. So the pearls may look very beautiful, but if there's no thread, you know, they are just on the floor. They have no value. But when the thread is there, the pearls look very beautiful. But it's the thread that keeps them together. So Prabhupada encouraged and all our acharyas say, that we should always have a goal, Mataji. The goal should be according to what Sadhu, Sastra, and Guru tell us. And that is, the goal should be Ahaituki Apratihata. We should pray very earnestly to Krishna. Our Icha, desire, should be that we should always render devotional service without motive to Krishna. But if there's a problem now in front of us, something is coming to us now, the source of our protection is Krishna. When the Brahmashtra was coming before Arjuna, Arjuna chanted Krishna Krishna Mahabaho Bhakta Namabhayankaraha Vameko Dhyamananam Apavargo Sisam Sritehe Krishna said, Arjuna told Krishna, Oh Krishna, I may be very powerful and competent as a warrior to actually counteract the Brahmashtra. But the truth of the matter is, without you being the source of all protection, I am useless. This is the point that we should understand. That even though we may try to solve material problems in this material world, and sometimes the material problems are so strong and so powerful and overwhelming, we should understand that the solution to all material problems is actually execution of devotional service. When we perform devotional service, which is very pure and directed to Krishna for his satisfaction, whatever problems that we have, we just have the faith that Krishna will handle the problem. Ananyas chintayanto maam ye janaha paryupasite desham nitya abhiyukta naam yoga kshemam vahamiyaham To those who are exclusively devoted to Krishna, they have nothing else except Krishna. He preserves whatever they lack. No, he preserves what they have and he gives them what they lack. So very often our material miseries is because something dangerous is coming or something we lack. But if we have faith that Krishna, there is a problem coming. There is a Brahmashtra coming. I know you are the protector as Narsingha Dev. You kindly protect my devotional service so that even in these problems, I do not forget you. 
That should be our prayer, even in the most difficult of material anxieties. Because our earnest prayer is that let us never forget Krishna in any situation. When Jai and Vijay were cursed by Sanat Kumaras to come to this material world, they accepted the curse. But they only said one thing to Jai and Vijay, you can curse us and we can be in trouble. But please, please ensure that our consciousness doesn't forget Krishna when we come into this material world. So this is how we balance facing the material challenges and always praying to Krishna for protection of our consciousness. The body will eventually deteriorate. But Bhagavatam says that it is our duty to take care of our body, only to remember Krishna. So if our goal is always Krishna Mataji, then even though there are difficulties anywhere, we can put forward an earnest prayer to Krishna from the heart. That Krishna, all these anxieties are here and they threaten to take away my mind and my remembrance of you. You please take care of it in your way and let me continue my devotional service to you and give me the intelligence how to solve all these problems because on my own it is not possible to solve. This is the prayer of all the great devotees in Bhagavatam. I hope that helps, Madhuri. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, can we take one last question, Prabhu? Yes, yes. I was going to say one last question is good for me. Okay. So, Jeevan Gaur, Prabhu, can you unmute and then ask your question? Hi, Krishna. Devakinandan Prabhu, thanks a lot for the nice and blissful class. We Hare really enjoyed the class. Uh, Prabhuji, I have a question. Uh, actually, I've come across this question from many newcomers uh, who heard Prabhupada saying or they are reading from some Prabhupada books somewhere that if you chant the prescribed round and uh, if you follow the four regulative, regulative principles, then Prabhupada is giving guarantee that you will be promoted to the uh, spiritual world. So, in that case, they are counter questioning uh, that what is the need of uh, hearing and uh, reading uh, so intensively when you are just guaranteed to go back to God by doing this. So it becomes yes. really difficult to answer such question. Yes. So can you please guide us in a bit? According to my understanding, when Prabhupada says that you chant your prescribed rounds, in other words, we have to perfect our chanting. And to perfect the chanting of the holy name, uh, we will understand that perfecting the chanting of the holy name means that we should always remember Krishna when we chant. And the best way to remember Krishna and to cement our chanting is actually on the foundation of transcendental knowledge of Krishna. We will only be able to remember Krishna if we know something about Krishna. And when we chant Krishna's names, our mind will run. But if we chant Krishna's names and we remember the great pastimes of the Lord and his transcendental qualities, then our prescribed rounds as we chant become perfect. So actually, intrinsic to Chanting Krishna's names is hearing about him. And intrinsic to hearing about him is to gather transcendental knowledge about him. And intrinsic to gathering transcendental knowledge of him is to study Srila Prabhupada's books seriously. By studying Srila Prabhupada's seri books seriously, one enhances one's faith in Krishna. And that faith in Krishna fixes the prescribed rounds that we chant. And if we chant the rounds very nicely, then the four regulated principles that actually define the way we live in this world become automatically taken care of. And in that way, one is assured of going back to Godhead according to the pleasure and the mercy of the Lord. So in that way, Prabhu, when I try to explain this to the newcomers, uh, they then appreciate that actually there is a very important point behind the foundation of how we chant our prescribed rounds. And that is why when they take it up and they practice it, practice reading, they find actually reading cements chanting and chanting enhances reading. They actually very, um, they, they, they go very well hand in hand actually. So that way Prabhu, I found personally, uh, newcomers become convinced of this point. I hope that helps Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you for keeping your doubt. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you Prabhu. On behalf of the Spawn Milton Management, I Really, really appreciated your precious time and your great Bhagavatam class. It was like a heart to heart communication, I really felt. So, we hope you can give more classes in future whenever you have some time. Thank you very much again, Prabhuji. Thank you for your association. And please, please for me that I shall continue in devotional service. And Krishna willing, we will see each other again sometime.
Thank you so much, Yogananda Prabhu. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank